Lexus claims that the RC name stands for Radical Coupe. Well, this model's primary hybrid engine is certainly very different to the conventional power plants its competitors offer, and it'll deliver you taxation savings that are very different too. As for the car itself, well, it's been subtly improved in this revised form, but its appeal remains much as before, with an extra dimension of class that offers a change from the usual German prestige branded choices in this segment. Those cars are usually simply sleeker versions of existing saloon models. The Lexus RC isn't like that. If you're after something different in this class, it has its own very distinct appeal. A sports coupe can be different things to different people. For some, it must be a rewarding driving machine, first and foremost. Others, though, want to balance dynamic virtues with qualities like costing luxury and impressive efficiency. It's to these people that this Lexus RC Coupe is designed to appeal. It was launched back in 2014, then four years later, the brand's flagship LC Coupe inspired the updated version that we're going to look at here. In price and performance terms, this car is designed to suit those who are looking at coupes based on premium badged compact executive saloons, uh, specifically coupe versions of the BMW 4 Series, the Audi A5 and the Mercedes C-Class. Now, This RC shares some of its parts with a compact four-door Model 2, the Lexus IS, but the brand says it now also borrows a little more of its DNA from the larger full luxury segment LC coupe model we just mentioned. Hence, perhaps, what the Japanese make hopes is a more upmarket feel. The kind of thing that you'd want if you had to downsize from, say, a BMW 8 Series, a Mercedes S-Class Coupe, or even a Bentley Continental GT, but you didn't want to make too many compromises in luxury. If all that sounds tempting, then Lexus hopes you might also like this car's rather exclusive looks, originally derived from a concept car that the brand first displayed at the 2013 Tokyo Motor Show. A year later, the RC was launched in production form, but only as a pricey, high-performance V8 RCF variant. It took until early 2016 for two more affordable versions of this car to be made available, a petrol-electric hybrid and a more conventional turbo 2-litre RC200T version. But Lexus hoped would have more mainstream appeal, but it didn't. So as part of the changes made here, the only four-cylinder engine you can now have in an RC is a 2.5-litre self-charging hybrid unit that nearly all customers liking this car will want anyway. The wild RCF V8 version continues with a few updates that include an extreme track edition version, but our focus today is on the petrol electric model. As part of the updates we've got here, the revisions made are certainly subtle, but Lexus insists they're significant and that they go further than the few minor tweaks made to the exterior styling. Enhancements have been made to the RC's aerodynamics, to its tyres and suspension, and there are also improvements to engine response and steering feel. None of which, of course, is going to be enough to give this car the handling bite of a BMW, an Audi or a Mercedes. But hybrid buyers don't mind that and they'll be pleased to find a higher quality cabin with an enhanced standard of infotainment across the range. All of which should enhance this car's more laid back, more luxurious approach to sports coupe motoring. And that's something that Lexus hopes will please people who are tiring of the usual German alternatives in this segment. Will it? Well, that's what we're here to find out. So, what to expect? Well, on one hand, you know this to be a luxury Lexus that's larger and heavier than its German coupe rivals, with an emphasis on poise rather than performance. On the other, you can't get away from the fact that it looks purposeful and dynamic, almost like some kind of swollen and slightly more sophisticated Toyota GT86. It's a contradictory confection. 
Now we produced a separate film on the top version of this RC, the wild 5 litre V8 powered RCF range topping model which packs a 457 horsepower punch to the backing of a soundtrack inspired by a Lexus's ballistic LFA supercar. Here though our focus is on the mainstream RC model, the hybrid RC300H. Now we'd expected this revised RC design to feature the evolved fourth generation of this car's 2.5 litre petrol electric unit, the one you'll find in the company's more recently designed ES Saloon. But no, the RC must soldier on with this power plant and the same guys we saw it when the car was first launched back in 2014. That's disappointing because as part of the changes made to this power plant in its fourth generation form, uh, the engineers set out to try to minimize the rubber band effect that's long afflicted Toyota and Lexus hybrid engines mated to belt driven CVT gearboxes. Uh, the kind of transmission that you have to have with the Japanese conglomerate's hybrid synergy drive system. Now specifically this relates to the issue of throttle stabs resulting in soaring revs but not much appreciable extra forward motion. That's certainly an issue here and as a result overtaking manoeuvres will have to be planned with a bit more care than you'll be used to if you're moving into this car from a much torquier diesel model in this class. It obviously doesn't help in this regard that this Lexus is so much heavier than its diesel competitors. It tips the scales of up to 1,775 kilos. Uh, to give you a bit of class perspective on that, a rival Audi A5 Coupe 40 TDI S-Tronic weighs in at just 1,490 kilos. That explains why, even though this Lexus puts out 220 horsepower, that's about 30 HP more than its direct rivals, it accelerates significantly slower. Uh, Rest to 62 occupies 8.6 seconds, that's about a second and a half slower than a Mercedes C220D or a BMW 420D. And top speed, well that's limited to just 118 miles an hour. The sort of people who'll be attracted by this car won't care very much about that or about the fact that its handling responses are hardly cutting edge. No, not even in this revised model, uh, which claims to feature improvements to engine response, steering feel, tyres and suspension, all of it supposedly reflecting the sharper and more refined drive philosophy that the brand reckons it introduced with its larger LC Coupe. Those changes are hard to discern. Uh, to us, uh, there don't seem to be any improvements in this updated RC300H model's throttle response. Uh, any marginal enhancements would doubtless be disguised by that frustrating gearbox and fiddling with the steering wheel paddle shift as well. That doesn't help much either. Uh, the steering feels as vague as it was before too. Although Lexus does claim that its ratio has been retuned in pursuit of faster feedback. The ride is definitely better though, and that's courtesy of new shock absorbers and stiffer suspension bushings. Uh, it deals with broken tarmac in its stride, and it allows this car to cruise over potholes and speed humps, uh, but it does still imbue the RC with decent body control during spirited cornering. Lexus says that it's tried to replicate the flatter, more stable ride quality of its larger LC model, and we reckon it's done so with some success. As before, the F Sport variant, which is what we've got here, uh, comes with the brand's AVS, that's Adaptive Variable Suspension Setup, which works through the various settings of this car's Drive Mode Select driving mode system. Now, Drive Mode Select is activated by this silver rotary dial down by the gear stick, and like most setups of this sort, this one primarily deals with throttle response, uh, steering feel, and gear shift timings. Uh, the system will default to its normal mode on startup, plus there's a snow option to limit wheel spin in bad weather and for those occasions when you're feeling virtuous there's also an eco setting provided which restricts engine output and throttle response. It's only when you switch to the more serious Sport S driving mode though that the RC really seems to wake up and take an interest in the road ahead. Uh, the F Sport variant gets an extra, even more focused Sport S Plus setting and when that's engaged, uh, decently rapid secondary road point-to-point -point journeys are possible. Um, even then though, you're never really encouraged to start flinging the thing about. 
Of course, at a cruise, this car is far more in its element, no doubt aided by a package of aerodynamic enhancements that Lexus reckons have improved high-speed stability. Uh, they may also have further enhanced refinement, which remains exemplary. Uh, going back to a diesel rival after living one of these would be something of a culture shock. On commuting journeys, this car is equally superior to its segment competitors. Uh, like all Lexus and Toyota hybrids, it can be driven in three ways, by the electric motors only, as it is from the start off for up to 1.2 miles, uh, with just the engine if you're giving it full throttle, or more usually with a combination of both. Uh, during deceleration and under braking, the engine switches off and both electric motors act as high output generators, recovering kinetic energy that uh, automatically recharges the batteries for the next time that the hybrid system is able to switch back into electric only mode. In other words, you have all the ingredients for what might arguably be the most sensible sporting car you can buy. One of the key reasons you might want this car lies with the way it looks. Uh, this mainstream version inevitably does well out the uh, resting machismo of its high-performance RCF stablemate, but it'll still turn heads, especially if you specify this particular model's distinctive metallic sonic titanium paintwork. Uh, the shape appears sophisticated, and it is. Other models in this class are merely coupe versions of existing compact executive saloons. In designing the RC, the stylists were free to create something far more unique. In terms of the changes made to this updated RC model, well, you'd really have to know the car quite well to notice them or get this facelifted version parked next to an original. Then you'd pick up the revisions made to this distinctive double spindle grille. It's one of the few in current production that's actually improved by the addition of a large registration plate. As with the larger LC Coupe, it's now comprised of shapes which gradually transform from top to bottom, creating what the stylists say is an intriguing visual tension. Maybe. Well, the lower corner cutouts here are now differently shaped too, and the tick-shaped daytime running lights, which were previously separated from the LED headlamps, have now been incorporated into them. Uh, the more distinctive triple LED headlamps that are fitted to F-Sport and Takumi models now have a different vertical style of arrangement too. From the side, the low-profile styling still looks arresting, uh, seemingly shrink-wrapped with three-dimensional curves that seem to change in appearance and effect as you move around the car. Uh, creating these powerful character lines and super-thin panel gaps required Lexus to master the kind of advanced manufacturing press technology previously reserved for motor show concept cars. Now, it's from this perspective that you might realise this model is slightly larger than its obvious rivals. That's another advantage of not having to base this design directly on an existing saloon. It's 22 millimetres longer than an Audi A5 coupe and a significant 55 millimetres longer than a BMW 4 Series coupe. That helps to create a more mature stance and that's further emphasised by the huge 19-inch wheels you get on F-Sport and Takumi models. And now, apparently inspired by the striking multi-spoke rims fitted to that larger LC coupe. Bright orange brake calipers provide the finishing touch. It's from the rear that this improved RC design is most easily identifiable thanks to these restyled LED combination lamps with their more pronounced L-shaped lenses. As before, little fins adorn the outer edges of these lights, uh, part of a whole package of features designed to funnel airflow back and cleanly away from the car. Also aerodynamically orientated are these corner bumper vents. Uh, they're simpler and smaller than the multi-finned corner air ducts that previously adorned the RC's rear section. And as before, twin exhausts uh, peek out from a menacing dark lower diffuser that's uh, positioned to emphasize the car's wide stance and low center of gravity. But what about the stuff that you can't see? Well, much of it's drawn from older parts of the Lexus brand engineering catalogue. Uh, now, that means rear architecture from the 2013 era Mark III version of the company's compact IS saloon, a front structure from 2011 era Mark IV version of the company's old full executive class GS model, and the floor plan from the 2008 era ISC convertible. 
Okay, time to take a seat inside. Now, Lexus has always been very good at interiors. It still is. We've always liked the way that this leather-lined cabin is deliciously different to the German class norm in its statement of style, but the design was in need of an update, and hopefully a few premium touches gained from experiences learned in developing the deliciously inviting interior of the brand's larger LC Coupe. Well, that's exactly what we've got. This central analog clock comes directly from the LC, and Lexus has also incorporated lessons recently learned in seat design in creating these highly supportive sports seats, which use Use what the brand calls an integrated foaming method, which has made them even more comfortable. The changes made to the infotainment system leave us with more mixed feelings. Uh, it's obviously good that the larger 10.3 inch screen of the Lexus premium navigation system is now fitted as standard across the range. Uh, previously, the display was just seven inches in size, but our issue with the brand's premium setup has long been that instead of the old Lexus media display setup's intuitive rotary controller, this bigger monitor has to be had with what Lexus calls its remote touch interface controller. Uh, it's essentially an eight-way movable mouse pad just below the gear stick that works as a screen cursor. Now this requires quite a subtle touch and it's almost impossible to use it on a bumpy road. Overall we prefer the functionality of the original RC model's lesser setup and either way, uh, the infotainment provision you'll find in German rivals is infinitely preferable. Not that the core elements of the Lexus package are really lacking. I mean, it's true we don't have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring fitted here, but Lexus is promising to add those in the near future. Um, otherwise, the premium navigation package deals with everything that you'd expect it to. It covers off all the usual navigation, uh, DAB radio, media, Bluetooth, phone and climate functions, plus it incorporates a rear view camera and the selected settings of the drive mode select system, plus a selectable energy monitor that at any given time shows you how the hybrid system is working and what is powering what. Um, now one key advantage of this bigger monitor is its split screen function that allows you to, uh, for example, oversee a sat nav map at the same time as keeping that energy monitor in view. The instrumentation you view through this satisfyingly grippy three-spoke wheel remains a real cabin talking point, or at least it is on this F-Sport model anyway. Now, as before, it's based on the layout used by the brand's old LFA supercar, with colours and graphics that change according to the driving mode that you select via this silver dial just here by the auto gear stick. Uh, the single central dial is usually a hybrid indicator with eco, power and charge sections, but if you select one of the sport driving modes, it transforms itself into a rev counter. That's neat, um, as is the way that uh, when you press this steering wheel button, the dial slides neatly to the right to reveal an information panel with trip computer, compass, audio and safety setting info. Plus, it can also show a scaled back version of that energy monitor and even a G-forces readout. These are detailed touches, but then detailed touches are what RC owners really appreciate. For example, the touch-sensitive electrostatic switches are used to adjust the air conditioning temperature, uh, the lovely stitched instrument binnacle top, uh, the way that the interior lights activate with a swipe of your finger, oh, and the way that the electric windows slow as they gradually close with a lovely softened thud. This all contributes to what this RC model's chief engineer, Junichi Fururami, describes as a Japanese omotenashi welcome. It's all very nice indeed, and in comparison, a rival BMW, Mercedes or Audi will feel a class or two less polished, unless you spend a fortune specking it up. Detail enhancements made to this revised RC model include uh, this brushed surface that's been added around the heater control and audio panels, plus the knee pads either side of the centre console are now larger, and there's revised shaping and stitching for the driver's palm rest. Uh, in addition, on this particular F-Sport trimmed Takumi Pack specified model, uh, the cabin is brightened by this cross-hatched silver Naguri aluminium trim that features on the doors and above the glove box there. All F-Sport RC buyers uh, are treated to a package of extra interior touches, uh, and they include an aluminium finish 
for the pedals, uh, for the interior trim panels and for the scuff plates. Plus there's a branded steering wheel and there's stitched quilting for the bespoke sports seats. If Lexus could add in the belt butler that on arrival Mercedes Coupe powers out on entry to hand you your belt buckle, the ambiance would be almost perfect. All round visibility isn't great, but then it rarely is on a coupe. Uh, the view past the front A pillars is okay, uh, but the long front end and the prominent rear spoiler can sometimes make the car tricky to place on the road and to park until you get used to its dimensions. Uh, on the plus side, despite the wide centre console here, there's plenty of room for you to rest your left foot. And this sunroof, where it's fitted, doesn't eat into headroom. As for practical RC touches, well, there aren't too many. Uh, glove box space is compromised by the integrated box. Uh, the door pockets are ridiculously small and there's no overhead cubby for your sunglasses. Um, what you do get is this storage compartment between the front seats here, which incorporates a couple of USB ports, an aux in point and a 12 volt socket. In front of it, there are these two deeply recessed cup holders and you get ticket clip recesses up here in the sun visors. The age of this cabin design is betrayed by the inclusion of a fascia CD player, which we like, and the fact that you can't specify a wireless charger, which we don't. Uh, build quality is almost faultless, and scratchy plastics are relegated to areas that you'll rarely touch. Right, time to try the rear, and that's accessed via doors that are so long it'll be hard to fully open them in a cramped car park. That does at least help with access to the rear, as does a one-touch walk-in function that activates when you pull this lever on the seat's shoulder, and it slowly slides the base and the backrest forward. As for actual space back here, well, you shouldn't get your hopes up. I mean, even by the standards of the mid-sized coupe class, legroom's tight. Uh, rival coupe versions of the BMW 4 Series and the Mercedes C-Class may be shorter in overall length, but they have slightly longer wheelbases, and that enables them to offer marginally more room for adults. Uh, on top of that, the sloping roof line means that anyone over six feet tall will have their heads right up against the roof here. Uh, you can at least get your legs into the footwell without the person up front having to jam themselves up against the bulkhead though. But uh, we had hoped for a bit more. Still, none of this will be of much interest to typical RC buyers who, if they use these seats at all, will only press them into service for children or for designer shopping bags. Should you happen to be confined back here on, say, a short return journey from the pub, you're served by seat back pockets, uh, twin vents and side armrests below double stitched interior panels that incorporate these tiny circular speakers. Uh, the rear side windows are smaller than they appear from the outside and we're not absolutely sure what the point is of this hard plastic central seat base panel. Out back, boot space is a touch restricted too. Uh, the need to accommodate the batteries of the hybrid Synergy drive system robs the cargo area of 34 litres of space. And we know that because the last RC we tested, one with the old conventional two litre petrol turbo engine, had 374 litres of luggage area. This RC300H has uh, just 340 litres. In the non-hybrid V8 powered RCF model, it's 366 litres. Uh, to give you some segment perspective, on that, the boot of a rival Mercedes C Class Coupe, which offers uh, 380 litres, isn't too far away from the size of this RC's trunk. But the other two key contenders in this category offer way more cargo room. Uh, BMW 4 Series Coupe offers 445 litres, while an Audi A5 Coupe has 465 litres of boot space. To be fair, the boot is deeper than it looks and it's reasonably usable with four silver tie down points and three tie straps, two just inside the boot lid and another in this recessed area on the right. Bag hooks are missing, uh, there's a high loading lip to get your stuff over, there's no space beneath the boot floor and because of the batteries there's no opportunity to add in any sort of spare wheel either. On the plus side, uh, should you need to accommodate longer items, there is a 60-40 split folding rear backrest which will allow you to accommodate those longer loads but do bear in mind that you don't get those on the V8 powered RCF.
From the time of its update in late 2018, the RC Coupe was priced in the 39 to 46,000 pound bracket. That's in this RC 300H hybrid form, that petrol electric powertrain being the only one now available in the mainstream model. The previous conventional petrol turbo RC 200T variant having been dropped. Uh, buyers are offered an entry level standard RC derivative, but most opt to find the extra three and a half thousand pounds that Lexus wants for this more dynamic looking F Sport version. That's available with or without the brand's premium Takumi pack. Now, if you want your RC hybrid fully loaded, you'll need the top Takumi version. As before, there is also a road-burning RCF version of this car with a conventional 5-litre V8 engine, and that's also improved as part of the midterm updates. Uh, this costs from around £63,000 in its standard form or in carbon form with a carbon fibre roof for around £70,000. There are also a couple of track-orientated versions, uh, the Track Pack model for around £73,000 or the fully loaded Track Edition derivative, and that's priced at a cool £80,000. Today, though, our focus is on this RC 300H hybrid model, which primarily targets coupe versions of mid-sized executive saloons made by the prestige German brands, specifically three cars, coupe versions of the Audi A5, the BMW 4 Series and the Mercedes C-Class. Now, none of those models can be had with any sort of hybrid engine, so likely buyers who have this hybrid RC on their radars will be considering the equivalent diesel alternatives, namely the Audi A5 Coupe 40 TDI 190 PS model, uh, which at the time of this test in base sport form costs fractionally less than an RC, or a BMW 420D, which in comparable sport auto form costs fractionally more, and a Mercedes C220D AMG line Coupe, which costs about £2,000 more. Now, in all three cases, you can improve significantly on this Lexus's fuel economy showing, but much of the benefit of that would be eroded by the pricier cost of the diesel fuel that you'd have to buy. And this RC300H easily leads the class in terms of its 114 grams per kilometre CO2 reading, although not by perhaps as much as you might think if you paid attention to all the recent diesel scaremongering. Uh, Lexus, though, reckons that this RC is a slightly classier, more mature option in this segment than cars like the ones we just mentioned. It's more than just a two-door version of an existing saloon. Instead, it's a product in its own right. So arguably a better match for this car than the rivals we've just been talking about is Mercedes' more upmarket E-Class Coupe. And that's a car directly comparable in size, but which costs around £2,500 more in its most comparable 194-horsepower e 220D Coupe AMG line guys. Even if you compare this RC to C-Class, A5 and 4 Series models though, it can seem pretty good value once you take into account its higher level of spec and that's something that we're going to have a look at in a little more detail. Outside, an entry-level RC Coupe variant comes fitted with 18-inch five-spoke alloy wheels and, like all RC models, gets LED headlamps with an automatic high beam, along with LED technology that also features with the daytime running lights and the rear light clusters. Plus, there are auto headlamps and wipers, front and rear parking sensors, uh, headlamp washers and an alarm. And you now get dynamic radar cruise control, which can automatically control your highway speeds relative to other vehicles around you. Inside, all RC models come with dual-zone climate control and a four-mode version of the drive mode select system, which allows you to tweak throttle response, steering feel, and gear shift timings to suit the way that you want to drive. Uh, there's upholstery in Tahara man-made leather, a smart entry and start system, cruise control, a leather-stitched multifunction steering wheel too. Um, there's a reversing camera, a power-adjustable steering column, split-folding rear seats, and there's an auto-dimming rear view mirror. Uh, infotainment, now that's taken care of by a 10.3 inch Lexus premium navigation display. Now that used to be limited to top RC models, but it's now fitted as standard across the range. It uses a remote touch tracer control, electrostatic touchpad, and it gives you Bluetooth phone compatibility, uh, plus a 10 speaker Pioneer DAB audio system with a DVD player. 
Most potential RC buyers, though, will be considering the more dynamic-looking F-Sport level of trim. Now, F-Sport variants alone get the desirable adaptive variable suspension system, which allows the drive mode select setup to also alter the ride. Uh, now, there's also an extra drive mode setting to play with at this level, Sport S+. Plus. Uh, in addition, buyers get larger 19-inch multi-spoke dark-finished F-Sport alloy wheels, distinctive triple L configuration LED headlamps and a smart mesh front grille plus power folding mirrors and LED turn indicators. Inside, F-Sport models feature an aluminium finish for the pedals, for the interior trim panels and the scuff plates. Plus, there's a branded steering wheel, bespoke F-Sport seats which are both heated and ventilated and which feature real smooth leather with stitched quilting along with eight-way power adjustment. You also get a bespoke uh, instrument cluster too with a neat uh, movable dial and that's a layout that's borrowed from the brand's old LFA supercar. If ultimate luxury is your priority, though, you'll need the top Takumi variant, which, as you might expect, really does include almost everything you could want. Outside, the 19-inch wheels have a smart 10-spoke finish. Inside, there's beautiful Shimamoko wood trim panelling and eight-way power-adjustable heated and ventilated leather front seats. Uh, plus, there's steering wheel heating, there's a sunroof and a card key. The audio setup moves up a grade two at Takumi level. Uh, you get a thumping 17-speaker Mark Levinson 7.1 channel surround sound system. On to options. Now, if, like many RC buyers, you're looking at this mid-range F Sport variant, but you understandably want that Mark Levinson surround system, then you can have it by adding in an optional Takumi pack, which also includes the steering wheel heating and the sunroof that you get on the very top model. Plus, unique Naguri aluminium trim inlays, and that's the package that we've got here. And for us, that represents the sweet spot in the RC range. Uh, of course, as we mentioned earlier, there's quite a price gap between the standard RC model and this F-Sport version. Now, if you don't feel inclined to make it, but you want an extra touch of luxury, then you can add in real leather upholstery and the sunroof to the entry-level derivative. Bear in mind, though, uh, whatever LRC variant you decide on, unless you want it painted in velvet black, that's the only solid colour available. You'll have to be paying your dealer more for one of the optional metallic shades, or you could go for one of the pricier special metallic paint finishes. Uh, that's what we've got here with this Sonic Titanium model. Uh, Sonic White, Azure Blue, Sonic Red and Bright Naples Yellow are your other special metallic options. Now, you might choose to set the whole effect off with an optional rear spoiler. Uh, when it comes to practical extras, the first thing your dealer will point you towards is the protection pack, which gives you a useful boot liner and which also throws in a smart set of illuminated scuff plates for the doors. Uh, for the cargo area, you could also specify horizontal or vertical cargo nets, a foldable storage box and rear bumper protection film to protect from scrapes and scratches when you're loading items in. Uh, floor mats are available in black textile or rubber and you can have door edge protection and door handle protection film. Uh, your dealer can also sell you protection packages for the bodywork, uh, the alloy wheels and the interior upholstery, plus wheel locking nuts and a safety kit. And there's an optional ashtray to fit in one of the cup holders if you haven't kicked the habit yet. On to safety. Now for us, the most important change made to this RC model since its original launch lies in the package of cutting-edge camera-driven electronic safety features which are now fitted as standard. Now it simply wasn't acceptable in the modern market that the original version of this car had no autonomous braking system. Well, that has since been put right and this feature appears as one of the six elements included in what the brand calls its Lexus Safety System Plus Pack. So let's start with that autonomous braking feature. Lexus calls it a pre-collision system and it works as all these kinds of setups do, scanning the road ahead as you drive in search of potential collision hazards. Now if one's detected, uh, then you'll be warned. If you don't respond or perhaps you aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the uh, severity of any resulting accident. Now this setup is also able to specifically identify people and it'll apply braking if a pedestrian is detected in front of your RC at speeds of between 19 and 50 miles an hour. 
The other five Lexus safety system plus features can be quickly covered. Uh, lane keep assist warns dozy drivers who've drifted out of their lanes on the highway and it applies steering lock to ease the car back to where it ought to be. That works seamlessly with the uh, dynamic radar cruise control system that we mentioned earlier on. Uh, sway warning, that sounds an alert and displays a warning if steering input, lane positioning and vehicle sway suggest that the driver's fatigued. Uh, automatic high beam, well, that automatically dips your headlights for you at night. And road sign assist pictures road signs on the move and then displays them on the dash. As more conventional safety kit fitted to all RC models, well, pretty much everything you'd expect is present and correct. Uh, so you can tick off a pedestrian-friendly bonnet, Isofix child seat fastenings, and no fewer than eight airbags, twin front, side, and curtain bags, plus knee bags for both front seat passengers. Uh, across the range, you'll also find a tyre pressure warning system and hill start assist control, which stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Uh, there's also an emergency brake signal for panic stops. In addition, there are all the usual electronic driving aids for braking, traction and stability. Uh, now these are systems that in most other cars will only activate at the last minute if the situation demands it. In an RC though, it's all done a bit more cleverly. The so-called Lexus Vehicle Dynamics Integration Management Setup uh, coordinates everything together and it takes action to correct the car just that little bit earlier. Uh, at the top of the RC range on the Takumi model, Lexus also offers two further camera-driven safety features. A blind spot monitor works on the move to stop you from dangerously pulling out to overtake in front of another vehicle. And a rear cross-traffic alert system uh, will warn you of an approaching vehicle when you're uh, reversing out of a parking space. The blind spot monitor is optional on the two lesser variants. Let's cut to the chase here. As a business user, you're going to make really significant tax savings if you choose an RC300H hybrid rather than one of the diesel-powered premium German brand coupe rivals. Let's get specific. A 40% taxpayer will pay a total of £13,469 in benefit and kind taxation payments if he or she were to run this car over a three-year, 60,000-mile period. That's way less than you'd pay to run this model's most direct diesel competitors. An Audi A5 Coupe 4T TDI S-Tronic will cost you £1,798 more. A BMW 420D Auto will cost you £1,809 more. And a Mercedes C220D Coupe will would cost you a massive £3,416 more. And that makes you think, doesn't it? That's down to the fact that the inland revenue penalises diesels these days uh, an about turn from two decades ago when it incentivised them. And it's due to the fact that an RC300H manages an NEDC rated CO2 emissions reading of 114 grams per kilometre. Uh, to give you some segment perspective, an A540 TDI S-Tronic manages 117 grams per kilometre, a C220D 121 grams per kilometre and a 420D Auto 124 grams per kilometre kilometer. It's certainly true, of course, that a diesel will still give you better fuel economy. An RC300H manages a WLTP-rated combined cycle return of 45.5 mpg. It's not too far off a BMW 420D auto figure of 49.6 mpg, but it's way behind the C220D's figure of 54.3 mpg and the A5 40TDI's reading of 62.8 mpg. But of course, much of that difference will be covered off by those tax savings and by the fact that you'll be filling this Lexus's 66 litre tank with cheaper green pump fuel. While we're on fuel and CO2 returns, let's quickly cover off the readings for the powerhouse RCF model, which are as predictably awful as you'd expect they would be from a conventionally engined 5 litre petrol V8. Uh, a combined cycle WLTP reading of 23.9 mpg and a smoky 258 grams per kilometre of CO2. You could hardly annoy Greenpeace more if you attached a whale harpooning gun to the bonnet. This RC300H hybrid will be far more to the liking of green bearded folk, uh, particularly given the fact that during much of your urban motoring in this car, uh, say when you're inching along in traffic with the engine seamlessly disabled, uh, the EV mode activated 
and battery power in motion, you won't be emitting any emissions at all. Plus, it helps in this respect that cold weather operational efficiency has been improved with the brand's more recent hybrid technology. Now, that means that whereas previously uh, a chilly morning might have seen the drive unit default straight air into the petrol engine on startup, now it's much more likely to revert to the preferable electric mode as you glide out silently into the traffic. And that's a pretty cool sensation in a car of this kind. On top of that, an RC300H owner would also be saving in maintenance costs thanks to the low maintenance requirements that are built into the Lexus hybrid drive system. As part of this, there's no starter motor or alternator to go wrong, uh, no drive belts to break, uh, a maintenance-free timing chain, uh, no particulate filter to get clogged up with diesel fumes, and of course, thanks to that CVT Auto gearbox, there's no clutch either. Uh, the hybrid drive system has a good record for minimizing tire wear, and the battery will last the life of the car. Plus, the regenerative braking setup helps to extend the life of the brake pads. Over 60,000 miles of driving, uh, the front pads should only need replacing once, while the rear pads and all the discs will probably last the full distance. Bear in mind that you'll have to activate the drive mode select system's eco mode to get anywhere near the efficiency figures that we quoted earlier. Uh, this moderates throttle response and engine power output while tweaking the climate control. Uh, there are also other tools on offer to enable the driver to aid this car's frugality. Uh, in the car section of the center dash display, there's a trip info screen uh, which shows the amount of regenerated energy that the hybrid system has created. And there's a past record history section uh, which graphically shows your success in frugality. There's more too. In the RC300H, a hybrid system indicator replaces the usual rev counter on the dash unless you select one of the sport driving modes. Uh, for ultimate efficiency, you'll have to make sure that the needle stays as often as possible in either of the blue eco or charge zones. If, rather understandably, uh, you find this gauge a touch annoying, given that this is supposed to be a sports coupe after all, you'll be pleased to find that those sport modes switch it into a rev counter. What else? Uh, residual values. Well, they're not quite as good as you'll get from the German brands in this class, but you're still looking at a competitive showing. Uh, independent experts reckon that after three years or 60,000 miles of use, a typical RC300H F Sport variant like this one would still be worth £18,725, which is pretty class competitive. Uh, remember, too, that when you're considering depreciation, an RC is better equipped than many of its premium rivals. Uh, to match this car's spec, you'd have to spend extra cash on options with those cars, and that is money that you'd be unlikely to get back at resale time. As for insurance, uh, while well, you're looking at Group 31E for the base RC and Group 32E for the F Sport and Takumi models, that top RCF is predictably up at Group 50A. There's a 12-year anti-corrosion warranty and a three-year paint warranty. Now, where Lexus could do better is in the warranty it provides. Uh, although there is an eight-year package to cover the hybrid engine, every other part of the RC package has to be covered by an unremarkable three-year 60,000-mile deal. And that doesn't seem overly generous in this day and age, and that's particularly since parent company Toyota offers five-year cover on its models. You can, of course, pay extra to extend this cover but in our view, you really shouldn't have to. But does that matter? This is, after all, a Lexus, a car in which market experience suggests virtually nothing is ever likely to go wrong. The facts are that hybrid technology generates fewer warranty claims than conventional petrol or diesel engines do. And if something ever should happen, so charming and helpful are the award-winning dealers in the network that you might end up being almost glad that it did. That's just as well, given that you are going to be visiting them relatively often for routine maintenance. Uh, servicing intervals are, after all, a little more frequent than we'd like. An intermediate service is needed at 10,000 miles and then every 20,000 miles thereafter. The first full service is needed at 20,000 miles and then every 20,000 miles thereafter. For an intermediate service, you're looking at around 295 pounds. For a full service, you could be looking at anything between 500 
145 and 675 pounds. Each service includes a health check for the hybrid system and prolongs the warranty of the hybrid battery for a further year or 10,000 miles. Overall, we'd suggest that it would be wise to invest in a prepaid servicing plan to help keep costs in check. Sometimes first impressions count, and we'd wager that this car, parked alongside a comparable BMW, Mercedes or Audi Coupe, would be seen by most as the classier, more upmarket proposition. Now that will matter to the small but discerning group of potential coupe customers willing to consider something different in this segment, as will the fact that this RC is not only good looking, but also beautifully built, agreeably rapid, lavishly equipped and everyday usable. Of course, uh, the fact that it's a little larger and a little heavier than its rivals has an effect in the form of its ultimate handling prowess. And RC isn't as agile to chuck around as coupe versions of the BMW 4 Series, the Audi A5 and the Mercedes C-Class would be. Nor is it quite as frugal in terms of upfront fuel economy stats. Does that matter? Well, we think probably not. Uh, the business buyers being targeted here don't want to drive like Fernando Alonso and the hybrid version of this car that almost all of those people will choose easily makes up for any slight efficiency shortfall with benefiting kind taxation savings that are hard to ignore. As for the changes made to this revised model, well, they'll be welcome if you already wanted one of these, but irrelevant if you didn't. Uh, the claimed dynamic differences are hard to discern, even for us, but the cabin upgrades are tasteful and safety provision is now well up to class standards. And in summary, well, this remains an interesting, more individualistic choice in this segment, and arguably a rather clever one, not least because with diesel now a dirty word in some sections of society, this RC300H model's self-charging hybrid power plant has become even more of a significant selling point. As a result, a certain kind of buyer will like this Lexus very much, and we can understand why. <laughs>